Hello. Hello. You're <laughs> Judith McKenzie. Yes. You're Professor of Earth System Sciences at the Geological Institute at the ETH Zurich. And uh, could you please describe your area of research? Well, I would call myself uh, a sedimentary geochemist okay. who's had a career change late in uh, my career and I've moved more into the ideas of the interaction between the biosphere and the geosphere with uh, emphasis on geomicrobiology. So I'm interested in sediments, geochemistry, low temperature, and the biology of, that in, that's associated with the production of these sediments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I would say that this transition is a natural one. And um, I uh, began my research for my uh, PhD was studying uh, hypersaline environments in the coastal sopkas of Abu Dhabi and I was interested in the geochemistry of the system and the sediments and the formation of dolomite. Okay. And my last PhD student, because I retired at the end of 2007, my mm -hmm. last PhD student did his thesis. We returned to Abu Dhabi to look at the same um, environment, yeah. hypersaline environment, the formation of dolomite with new eyes. And yeah. these new eyes were the bio biology. So we went there to, to uh, I, I would say, and I think it kind of reflects changes in the whole field mm -hmm. of low temperature geochemistry because when I was a PhD student we were interested in chemistry and physics of the system okay. and this introduction of the biology or microbiology into the system then is a nice way to wrap it up and we see that there's implications for microbiology in the formation of these carbonate minerals the dolomite okay. so um, in between I did a lot of other things yeah. okay. <laughs> but I would say these are kind of like the uh, the two goalpost mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. at the beginning of my career, my own PhD and my last PhD okay. student. So what, what did you find the most exciting in this, in this career? I think the most exciting thing is visiting new places. Mm -hmm. And um, it began when I went to Abu Dhabi to do my PhD, PhD in a new culture, in new environments. And I think this is the life of a geologist, is that um, you have to like it. Yeah. You have to like to be out in unusual places. I always say some of my most favorite places are stinky, where there's stinky, smelly mud, because <laughs> that means there's microbial activity and H two S is being produced. Yeah. yeah, or uh, uh, beautiful places like uh, working on coral reefs and sw swimming around and looking at all the fish and the coral. Yeah. So I think as a geologist, you have the opportunity to go to many beautiful places that you would never even think of doing as, yes. as a pure tourist. Yes. And so okay. you come into environments that maybe aren't the, the most pleasant always, but mm -hmm. they're always interesting from a geological point of mm -hmm. view. And I think this is one of the, the best things about our field of research okay. is, and if, you, if you're a geologist and you don't go in the field, you're crazy because yeah. uh, it's yeah, such a right. wonderful opportunity. I had a professor once when I was uh, uh, in my early career uh, before I did my PhD and I remember he said the best geologist is the one who's seen the most rocks and I, I've often said this the best geologist is the one who's visited you have to go to the rocks they don't come to you and so and so this, what did you least enjoy oh uh, what did I least right? enjoy yes. I think the um, administrative part of being uh -huh. the academic yes. career and I, I I have to say I have to admit I really don't like writing reviews mm -hmm. I don't like reviewing other people's papers I like reading them but I, I, I don't like reviewing proposals I like thinking about the ideas but actually having to cr make critique of people that's not one of my favorite things okay. to do okay. so I think that um, uh, it's a duty that we all have. Yeah, we have to review part. papers. It's part of our job. But this uh, the, this something. peer review system, it is sometimes very heavy. Because mm. I'm the kind of person, I don't want to reject something. I yes. don't, yeah. So you're yeah. always looking for the positive rather than the negative side. Now, if you still had another 40 years, what would you do? Oh, I think in another 40 years, I would just continue going on in the it's same line. On. I think what, um, what we've seen and this is this whole transition where we're coming from the pure physical and chemical aspects of sedimentology, geochemistry, and looking at the impact of the, of the biosphere on our natural mm -hmm. systems. Mm -hmm. And this is made possible because there's new technology. Okay. You know, as far as molecular biology has introduced new ways of looking at 
the microbial communities that are associated with our sediments. We have new imaging techniques down to, you know, we always say we're looking at yeah. we're looking at nanoscale yeah. processes yes. now, and uh, this is this is going to continue. And yeah. I, I think in the future you're going to see more of this, yeah. Yeah. and I would follow it through. So I. I think I, as a retired person, I'm still working because yes. I'm interested. You never stop. Though. You never stop. <laughs> Scientists yeah. never stop. No, exactly, yeah. because yeah. you love it. It's your life. Yeah. Somebody asked me, what is your hobby once recently? And I said, hobby? <laughs> My <laughs> hobby is science. Yes. Yeah. 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 So the proportion of female geoscientists has raised, finally, a little bit in the community. I, at least I hope. And... Um, how do you think the perception of female geoscientists has changed? Uh, and what do you think is still missing today? I, female scientists, I, okay, it's really good to have more. Yes. It's good for the, the lone female scientist is not a happy person uh, yes. because you're alone and yeah. you're, you have to, you are the representative and there's a lot of pressure on you. And so I think the more we have, the better. And uh, this is, this is, this, changes because then the perception changes as females become more readily acceptable. I have to say I don't really feel like I ever felt discriminated against okay. and I think one of the uh, one of my disappointments is that you always see there's always a new young batch of female scientists coming up, master students, even PhD students, but when you start looking up the career ladder they get fewer and fewer and I think mm. this is a disappointment Okay. And many people are talking about how can we change this because it is tough. Yeah. I think it's very hard for a woman to have to make uh, very difficult choices. Mm -hmm. what, how, how, how do you uh, build your career and your uh, personal life at the same time? And we have lots of good examples of how this can be done. And I think this is, this is where things have changed because the, um, in academia and also in industry now, there's a greater effort to try to try to keep female scientists in mm -hmm. professional careers and professional lifestyles. Yeah. And I think this is wonderful. Yeah. And I, I, the best thing was, it should be 50-50. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. should be the ultimate goal. Soon, we hope yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not fast enough. It's probably never fast enough. But, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's not threatening to men, because I think in a way, it should, it, your partners, you, the female has, a, the female scientist perhaps has a, a, a di she brings a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's complementary, mm -hmm. and it's very natural to have males and females mm -hmm. working together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, actually, what advice would you give, maybe as a female geoscientist with a different perspective? What advice would you give to junior? I scientists? would probably advice whether it's a uh, because I have lots of colleagues who are junior male scientists. Yes. I, I think the the advice is you follow your heart, and yes. I've said this several times. But you know, if you want to make a career, you go for it. You don't. You, you, you're going to spend most of your life working. Yes. And if you have something you love and you're really interested in doing it, you follow your career. And I don't give up. I think there's, there's always some way, something, a new door will open at some point. And you never know exactly when that door opens, so you should be ready for it. Okay. Yeah, and I think uh, too many people, yeah. they get depressed or down. And I, if, if I look at the, the people who persist, they're usually still there, okay. you know, 20 years later, mm. they've made it. And so I say follow your heart. Okay, great. Well, yeah. thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you. It was thank very nice you. talking to you. It was very nice having you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.